Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay. So we're going to talk about uh, Denmark, just a general uh, about Denmark and about history. And um, I'm Lisa, and I'm Inga. <laughs> so okay. Um, this doesn't work. Then it should. And anyway, on the picture here we see Denmark, which is the red uh, thing up there, and we see that it's kind of a small country, and we see the rest of Europe. Um, so the main information about uh, Denmark is that we have like these three islands that we see over on the picture here. We have the uh, Jutland and we have Sealand all the way to the right, and then we have um, <laughs> Funen, which is uh, the one in the middle there. Yeah, and then there are more than 400 uh, named islands, and 70 of these are inhabited. Um, yeah, so Denmark is. Uh, around uh, 42,000 um, square kilometers or around 16,500 square miles. Um, and then also uh, the Faroe Islands and Greenland is a part of uh, Denmark, where Greenland is about five times as big and the Faroe Islands are quite smaller. Um, in Greenland they gained, gained home rule in uh, 1979. And the Faroe Islands became a self-governing territory with the Danish state in uh, 1948. Um, and also Denmark is a part of Scandinavia and there's about a bit more than 5 million inhabitants. Yeah, then we have the history. Um, there was archaeological findings from like uh, a lot, uh, one yeah, 130,000 years before Christ. So yeah, our history goes a long time back. And what we're most known for is between the 8th and 10th century, we have wine kings in Denmark. Uh, and the Vikings raved in England, Greenland, and we're also in America. Um, yeah, because Leif Eriksson, or Leif the Happy, discovered uh, America 500 years before Columbus by a mistake. Um, Denmark was Christianized by Hell Bluetooth in 1956. So, that's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Greenland and the Faroe Islands. As Lisa told, we have uh, Greenland and the Faroe Islands. Uh, Green Greenland was colonized by Denmark in 19, no, 18, 1840. So, um, and was, is now only a part of Denmark, it's not a colony. Uh, and the Faroe Island was a part of Denmark from 1380 to 9, so, yeah. Um, we also have something called Skåneland, and we have Norway and Slesvig. Um, yeah. Uh, Slesvig is, no, yeah, here you can see uh, that is Holland, Sverige, Skåne. So that was a part of Denmark from 1267 to 700. 1710, uh, Skåneland was invaded by Denmark uh, 39 times, um, and Norway was a part of Denmark uh, from 1523 uh, to um, 1840. So Denmark at that time were really big. Uh, and then uh, we lost Slesvig, Holstein, and Luxembourg. That's the blue part mm. uh, for the second time in 1864. Mm. Um, yeah. All right. <coughs> um, so uh, in Denmark, we speak Danish, where the uh, alphabet is pretty much the same as the American, except we have the, these extra little word, uh, letters, A, U, and O. And the climate here is um, much colder than in. California. The, in the winters, it's usually snowy and around 42 Fahrenheit. And in the summers, it gets um, warmer during the day. It's mostly about around um, 
68 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. um, the elevation here, uh, the elevation in Denmark is very little, it's very flat, and well, the highest, um, the highest natural point is Müllerhoi, which is 561 feet, and the um, highest point in California is about 100 times as big. Hmm. So. Yeah, democracy in Denmark. Um, our absolute monarchy was discontinued in 1994, and that was the same year we got a law as the same as the constitution here in America. Um, and that was under King Frederick the Seventh of Denmark. Um, when we had, when we got uh, the right to vote, only 40 percent, 14 percent of the population could. Uh, women got the right to vote in uh, 1915 uh, mm -hmm. um, as one of the first countries in the world. All right. Um, and the politics today are uh, kind of different. Different. Um, we have the Queen over on the top of the picture, which is uh, Queen Margrethe II. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have uh, our cabinet government, um, and we have our um, national parliament, and then we have our prime minister, which we see a picture of here, who's mm -hmm. called uh, Peter Thorning Smith. Um, and Denmark is uh, generally a so social liberalistic society. Um, it works with having two strong parties. Um, it's a, a multi-party system, and we have those two strong parties, and then we have four or five other significant parties. Um, and all of these parties, political parties, have a um, specific amount of mandates uh, according to the votes they get at the elections. Um, yeah. So, and also it's a welfare state, uh, which means we take very good care of uh, everyone in the society. Yeah, the uh, Second World War was also in Denmark. Um, on the April uh, 9th, 1940, we were invaded. And the May, uh, 5th of May, uh, 1954, we were 45, we were uh, released. Released, yeah. Um, uh, the August 29th of 1943, uh, the government resigned. Uh, until then, the government has worked as it usually did. Um, we also had some resistance movements, but they didn't do much, but they were there. Uh, one of the, the three like most known one is Lustimsgruppen, Holger Danske, and Free Denmark. So, yeah. Any questions? and I'm having about healthcare in Denmark. Okay. Yeah. So, how does the healthcare system work in Denmark? Well, the first thing we have is we have our, uh, everyone is uh, covered by a tax uh, funded, tax funded insurance. So, as long as you have an ID uh, to show that you're actually a Danish citizen, you can just go to the doctor and you'll re receive treatment. So, Another thing we have about our tax system thank you, is that you only have to pay for non-essential uh, treatment like uh, cosmetical surgery, uh, the first time you're trying to get fertility treatment and uh, also most of the dental care uh, we also have to pay for ourselves. So <clears throat> the first thing thank you, is that we can choose between any doctor that is in our uh, geographical that is geographically nearby, uh, so we can just decide where we want to go. And these doctors, they're privately owned uh, institutions, but they receive money from uh, the state, and they have a specific uh, theme of what they receive per uh, patient. So the fourth thing is that the pharmaceutical industry is working uh, on the free market, so that will uh, say that if you're inventing medicine in Denmark, you're still getting rewarded because you'll still uh, be the only one that can uh, do it and you'll still give a better product that they want to use. So in that way we reward innovation. Uh, but the state pays some of the medication, so as a con 
customer, you're not paying the full price of the medication, which can usually be very uh, expensive to begin with. So, how does this add up in cost compared to uh, America? Well, we have, if you press again, we have the money spent on healthcare in uh, America, that's 973 billion uh, annually, uh, and that's just what the government paid. In Denmark, if you press again, we paid 102 billion. So uh, that's of course an affair to do a comparison like that. <laughs> if we look, yes, please. Click. If we look at the population, uh, USA has 310 uh, million compared to Denmark, where we are only five <laughs> and a half million. So if we instead take it, uh, next one, <clears throat> where we take it in uh, what the government pays, uh, next one, and what the government pays in Denmark hmm. per citizen. So please stop. Thank you. So the government in USA pays three thousand uh, dollars per citizen, and in Denmark we pay two thousand seven hundred. But then there's the insurance part of America, where you actually pay five thousand dollars per citizen uh, annually still, and in Denmark we only have one thousand seven hundred uh, annually. Are there any questions? No. Good. Very good. good. Yes, so my name is Nikolai and I'm going to talk about the Danish culture, uh, more specific it's uh, about urbanism, architecture and the use of space. Mm. And first off it's about the urbanism. Um, uh, we went from being an agricultural cultural, uh, country to an industrialized country uh, and we did that uh, the last 50 to 100 years, uh, where we in the late 19th century uh, had two thirds of the population was in uh, a rural, rural area uh, where it had something to do with agriculture, and, and now it's only 15%. Mm -hmm. um, the reason of this is uh, partly because of education and jobs moving into the big cities, and you have to transport long, and the winters is long in Denmark. And but then in 1980, uh, we had this green wave uh, where people went back in, like, to the nature and tried to live there. But most of them went back again because they were used to the opportunities they had with shops and entertainment and all that. And then when it comes to architecture, we have lived by this uh, fairy tale country. Uh, so the old buildings and castles we have are not really big and so it's not more like small cube with small doors. and. Uh, the roof is made by uh, like, like this. Hmm. Um, now the old uh, the modern uh, architecture is like big windows, big wide, uh, with not really anything in the front yard. And uh, also we have like only a few tall buildings around the, the country. Hmm. Especially back in the days, we only had like one or two uh, floors. Uh, we have some places where uh, you don't need like even big cities where you don't have above seven floors, so we don't have any really tall buildings. And then when it comes to the use of space, in the cities, it, the old buildings are located in the middle, and then we build out around it, and we have businesses and all that out there. And, and at the same time, we have a connection between the royal family and the government, so we have castles and so where the politicians now work and live. And we have this connection where you can walk down some streets in Copenhagen, where you have politicians and uh, royal family on the side and have statues of them. And when it then comes to private space, it's often like only for close groups, so it's only near family yeah. or uh, close friends who comes in and get to try this comfy and be home uh, yeah. feeling. Uh, so, yes. Any questions? So, when you peek at, uh, when you look at buildings, in the United States and compare them to buildings in, in, in Denmark and compare materials, what is your conclusion? My conclusion is that it's a very good question. <laughs> so, well, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. so it, may, may I help you with that? Uh, <coughs> Danish houses is primarily built uh, of very good masonry and, and they are built to last uh, a long time and, and American houses is 
I would call them wooden sheds compared to, to Danish houses mm -hmm. because. Okay, if that was what you were looking for, we also yeah. used way more brick and so in Denmark. So why? If that was one of the questions. Yeah, but why? Why do oh, you use more brick? Yeah. But I just know that we use it. Klima, right? Climate. Yeah, well, the, the climate is, is different and we don't have like extreme weather conditions, so we can actually say, I want to live here for like four generations mm. and, and then build a house accordingly. And you can't really do that because you have like in California, you have huge fires. Mm -hmm. So you, you have to think of the fact that you might have to rebuild. Earthquake. Yeah, an earth, earthquake. You don't want bricks running on your hand. We also, yeah. also yeah. have access yeah. to the bricks. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, our house is because we have like really changing environment here. Our winter, so our house is more isolation, mm -hmm. isolated. Isolated or insulated? Insulated. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. So Any yes. Any more questions? Yeah. What is uh, what is the country doing to protect the heritage of their buildings, the older buildings? So what they doing? Like to protect. Keep the architecture, the, well, the way the, the buildings look. Uh, on some of the oldest buildings, you're not even like allowed to paint it and all that kind of things. Mm. And often we have like, now we're trying to, in Albuquerque, we're trying to build this huge uh, silver hospital thing, but they really can't make the deal because there is something in the way as some kind of building. Mm. So they need to build around it so, so they don't allow people to destroy it and change something. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I can elaborate on that. We have two types of uh, two types of uh, conservation of houses. The one is the conservation of the, the exterior of the house. So you are allowed to change the interior, but you're not allowed to change anything exterior. Hmm. And then you have where you are. It's the whole house that is conservated. Hmm. So, and we actually also have uh, conservation where you you may actually tear down the building. But the thing you built instead should look like the original. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Huh? Yep. Good job. Um, hi, my name is Rasmus, and this is. Um, my name is Christian, and we are going to be talking about uh, the Danish food and economy. Okay. Um, Christian will be talking a bit about the food, and then I'll be talking about the economy afterwards. Okay. I will just go through the food, like some of the Danish dishes, and the ecology, and why we're trying to minimize food waste. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have breakfast. For breakfast, uh, it's different from adults to young people what they eat. Mm. Like adults, they often get whole green bread uh, with a cup of coffee, while young students and children, they often get different cereals with the milk product or juice to drink or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in the weekend we have kind of tradition for get to the bakery and get fresh bread and doing kind of kind of special with it and eat together because that's a part of the Danish culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we have lunch. Uh, most Danes bring uh, food leftovers to lunch, uh, and that's the next day because then we're trying to minimize food waste, or you can buy. Uh, food at the cafeteria at the school or the, your work. Yeah. And then for dinner, uh, many families are actually together and eating yeah, together at home. And actually a survey said that 80% of family actually eat together hmm. five times a week. So it's kind of the Danish tradition to be at home and be part of the family and a kind of normal traditional food. Denmark could be kind of potatoes and meat because we actually eat a lot of potatoes and that's kind of Danish thing to do. Yeah. yeah. And special events. It's typically a restaurant and we use a lot of money to kind of get you build a bit fancy and we have to do something extra about it. And we also have different different beers and food for different occasions. Like in Easter we have Easter beer and have some kind of Easter food. And for Christmas, we have Christmas food, and we also have Christmas beer to that. Hmm. And some of the Danish dishes you can see on the, on the picture. You can see fried bike with bacon and potatoes. There's the all plate you can see over here. And then we have pan-fried dumplings. It's all good. 
American football called Meatball. Mm -hmm. You can see on this picture, and Rosen Park here. These are very famous English dishes we eat. Mm. Yeah. Uh, um, the overview of the economy in Denmark is uh, we went through a crisis uh, in 2008. Um, it started and the 2014, uh, they think uh, the economy on economics uh, thing is a turning point for the crisis uh, because it went the other direction. Mm. Um, and the taxes are pretty high in Denmark compared to the, to here um, because we get like the other girls said, uh, no, uh, the other to be something talking about healthcare. Uh, we get that in Denmark and education and stuff like that. Um, and we, we export a lot of our uh, goods uh, from the farms and di dairy and stuff like that to mm -hmm. other countries. Uh, we can find blue uh, butter mm -hmm. almost all over, all over the world. Um, yeah, and we do a lot of uh, energy, like windmills. We want to establish windmills like all over the world. I think we have big companies uh, doing windmills, uh, and then the state is kind of uh, going on trying to educate people in being innovative uh, in order to uh, improve the Danish quality and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh. Uh, and the exchange rate for the Danish crown, uh, I was just going to come in on that, is uh, one uh, is point fifteen dollar for one Danish crown. So, yeah, uh, farming, um, like I said, the, the most farms are exporting a lot uh, compared to what we use ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the exporting, uh, how much we get for it in the country is one point five billion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, Two thirds of the countryside in Denmark is filled with farms, so it's kind of bacon fields. Uh, we do cows and pigs, so we have a lot of bacon as well. <laughs> um, yeah, VAT is uh, the tax uh, rate um, that you pay on every good you buy at the store. So here you pay like how much do you pay for? Eight percent. Eight percent. Mm. Yeah, and we pay 25 and it, when you see the price in the store, it's already put on a, mm. um, And then, yeah, the general uh, tax rate, like, uh, we pay from our income is 41%. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and then, of course, that makes a lot of people trying to do it legally uh, to get more. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any questions? Uh, we want to talk about how we socialize in Denmark. Uh, my name is Yves, this is uh, Rasmus, and over there is Johan. First of all, I want to talk about how we socialize in public mm -hmm. and how we use swear words, because that's very different from here. Uh, mm -hmm. He will talk about how our, uh, you know, how we talk about and use alcohol compared to over here. Mm -hmm. And he will talk about uh, our humor and, and uh, so some of our vowels that you guys don't have. Hmm. Um, well, can you, well, first of all, we have this uh, rule or this law called the Yanti law, which essentially means that you don't think that you should, you know, show what you have. You're not any better than anyone else. You don't know any better than anyone else, and and just you know, you sh you shouldn't uh, feel like you're the boss or the man anywhere at all. And that's just a a you know a social uh, rule that we have in Denmark compared to over here where you you like to you know show what you have and and be outgoing to to everyone and that's a, a huge difference uh, mm -hmm. as well and then we have uh, we don't have small talk in public we like to keep to ourselves and, and and don't really speak to to strangers which is also very different from over here mm -hmm. where people is very outgoing uh, to one another uh, like I mean if if you wait for the bus people come up to you and start a, a small talk conversation mm -hmm. and it's nothing like that in Denmark. Hmm. And we also, you know, have a personal comfort zone. We, we like to, to be a little, you know, we do our own thing when we wait for the bus and stuff like that. We, we use our smartphone and, and keep distance to one another. And there's this also, also this, this thing called the, the bus rule 
uh, where if if there's only seats where another person is sitting in the bus, you don't go s sit by them. You sit or stand by yourself. Uh, it's it's a very cultural thing compared to over here, where, where people you know just sit and, and they squeeze in tight. They like you know to be comfy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and and yeah. The use of swear words is very different in Denmark because we are a very in-religious country compared to over here, and we are actually one of the most in-religious countries in the world. So, we we have the tra traditions of religion, but we don't really practice it. So, there's a lot of bleep and blab and bloop, uh, which I don't want to say, uh, going on, and we use it more casually, and it's it's a part of uh, our culture. Yeah, uh, people are way more laid back and and use it as a casual uh, expression. Uh, our teacher actually said that uh, cursing is a way to express yourself and that's how we use it. Mm -hmm. We don't think it, of it as a, a bad thing at mm -hmm. all. Uh, and of course, there's no bleeps or uh, censorship in, in Denmark. Uh, we were, you know, one of the, the first countries to, you know, uh, legalize pornography and, and uh, all the kinds of stuff, gay marriage and stuff. And, and we're, you know, very laid back with, with all kinds of stuff, stuff like that. We don't mind it. And yeah, we're laid back. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, uh, Rasmus will talk about yeah, getting fast. About, <laughs> uh, like, our drinking culture. Mm -hmm. The age limit for drinking, like, is 15.6 and below is for 16. And then we have the 18, where there's no limit. They can buy a strong alcohol from vodka, tequila, like wine, any, any sort of thing. Mm. And then we also like, we don't see, like in the, in America, some people see beer as you don't drink in public and something. A lot of people in Denmark go to the, to the harbor, right, to the harbor and drink a beer mm -hmm. in the park and relax. And we all have something called carnival, in, especially in Oldenburg, mm -hmm. where like come from three different ways, dressed up, and just party and drinking. Mm. And we were going to a park called uh, Kille Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we see like strong alcohol for more like to party with. And some people see it with just to make tequila. Mm -hmm. I had uh, cocktails. And, and there are also a lot of people drinking underage. Not because they're not allowed, but their parents allow them when they're fifteen to get two beers maybe mm. or a glass of red wine at the dinner. Mm. And also we get really social when we are drunk. <laughs> like we mm. like to talk talk. It's like we move the comfort zone like the bus rule when we are drunk, like people love to party and chat with each mm -hmm. other and just have a great time. And also in Orbok we have like a whole street filled with bars. So Yeah. Uh, and I will talk about the humor in Denmark. Mm. The humor in Denmark is different. Uh, we make fun of almost everything we can do. Uh, but we don't mean it that hard. It isn't that hard when we say uh, something funny about a person. Uh, we're not intending to be cool when we're doing this. We are, we're just yeah, laid back, as you said. And uh, we're just having fun, mm -hmm. actually. And yeah, of course, uh, it's hard to understand the difference in the humor. Mm. Also, when we, when we look over here, size matters. Uh, Denmark is a small country uh, compared to the US. We, uh, we think that everything is so much bigger over here. Uh, in Denmark, everything is really small. Mm. Um, of course, we got the, the largest alphabet, so size matters. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we are bigger in, uh, in some ways. Mm. And we have this small video that is uh, explaining the size matters. Okay. Thank you. Is the sound to understand? And we'll figure out, I think. The American dream is to be supreme. The bigger, the better, the biggest ever. Size matters. David versus Goliath. You're the kick drum. I'm the hi hat. Size matters. We took a giant leap for mankind. We took a small step for cheese. Size matters. You had stuff on paper. You had stuff on a fucking hill. Science more is not less, it's more. Science matters. Science matters. For every act of that we got, you got a cast and a crew and a million dollars. Science matters. I complain about my belly fat. You die from it. I can compete with that. Science matters. It feels so small, but we must not forget that size matters. And 
we get the biggest alphabet? <laughs> Yeah. Very good. <laughs> That's it. Good job. Yeah, size matters. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone got any questions? How about our biggest alphabet? <laughs> <laughs> good job. <laughs> you introduce alcohol, we introduce alcohol earlier than mm -hmm. you do over here. What do you think that means for you? You can't drink here, you can drink at home. Well, me as a person, <clears throat> I was introduced to it when I was 13, and I think it was a good idea because it was un under controlled circumstances. I was with my, my parents actually at my confirmation, uh, and yeah, I got a bit buzzed, and we had a blast, and I, I think that it's a good thing to, you know, to drink. Uh, I know some people in Denmark don't do it, but, but I, I think it's a, a, fun, a fun thing, and, and we like to do it. I think they're missing out on that. <laughs> yeah, there, there are big differences when you think about it. Uh, for my circumstance, I, I was told, you can drink all you want, it's your fault because you are getting really sick the day after and you <laughs> figure out. Uh, of course, a lot of people are like, really strict with it and hold their kids a lot back and wait till you're 18 because that's why and that's when you can do it. Mm. So it's different from the family also. Yeah. Twice. The uh, extreme drinking culture actually also uh, got the effect that in the generation that is uh, below us, there's actually a, young, a lot of the young people who doesn't want to drink at all. So uh, that's why we're not the most drinking uh, country in Europe or in the world anymore. Because there's a lot of young people who are starting to say, well, a lot of people is drinking a, re a lot, so we're not drinking at all. Mm. So that's a really big thing actually in our next uh, generation. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not because <coughs> if we get introduced to it at an early age, it makes us uh, alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, but alcohol, I don't know, addicted to it. Yeah, Alcoholics. Alcoholic. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a fun thing and it's a culture, culture thing. So, yeah, we, we just enjoy it and we don't get addicted. Uh, Rune? Okay. Yeah, it, it's true that we drink a lot and it's, it's a cultural heritage. Where would you say that cultural heritage originated from, do you think, if you have to guess? Well, why do we drink so much? Where does that origin from? I guess, it, I don't know, I, I, my suggestion would be all the way back from the Vikings because we all always had a blast and, yeah. and, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, our, our party is always rocking. <laughs> Very back good. Then was, uh, back then it was like when you did something great and you wanted to celebrate and enjoy, you drank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, that's passed on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you a little anecdote about that. Actually, uh, we drink so much that, that it's, it's, it's a genetics. If you see um, people from Greenland, people from Asia, they have an enzyme that take care of the, the cleaning up of alcohol poisoning. Mm -hmm. And they are, their enzyme is very bad at Our enzyme are very, very good at, <laughs> at cleaning mm -hmm. up after alcohol intoxication. Mm -hmm. So if you see people from Greenland and Asia, they will not be able to tolerate that much alcohol. Typically. Mm. I don't know if you knew I that. I pass out. I <laughs> yeah. wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> and, and I think actually we have been just, uh, just to put to alcohol so much that, that it has been a positive selective pressure <laughs> sometime in our past. <laughs> and your genetic makeup. Yeah, yeah. it ended up being yeah. a part of our genetics. Too. Your genetics, yeah. yeah. Good job. I'm going to speak about religion and I'll compare Denmark and America because that's what we're assigned to. My name is Mass, so that's where we take it from. Okay. Um, church, about church, there's a lot of difference because we have a state church in Denmark and over here is more individual churches. And if you look at how religious people are, people are born into religion in Denmark, but people who believe in it aren't really that many. We have like 
between 13 and 17 percentage of people who actually believes, and there's a lot of elder people, not a lot of young people actually believes in really. Mm -hmm. When in America, more than 19 percentage of the population actually believes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the reason for it might be because of the welfare we have in Denmark, because it makes it like we don't have to be working for ourselves where, or we have to, but we have some kind of safe net where you don't have it here, mm -hmm. so you have, have something to pray for rather. <laughs> or something like that. And then also in how many of those churches is a, a big difference because in America, like 40 percentage actually goes to church weekly, where only a very few does in Denmark. Mm. And also about membership of the church, as I said, everyone <laughs> in Denmark, yeah, almost everyone is because you're born into the church, unless your parents or some are hosts are saying that you don't, or they don't want you to be into the Danish church. Where, <laughs> and it's more of a tradition than a belief in Denmark, and that's also the, most of the reason why we get married and why we actually go to where we bury people. It's not because of a religion really, but more because it's traditional and that's what we do, that's how our culture works. Okay. And, yeah. and also in America, where you have a lot of different churches, you also have something to work for because then it's more like a market because you would want to get as many as possible to get into those 50,000 50, different churches. So it wouldn't like, so it would be able to run around and get some economy going. Yeah, and then also about politics, there's also, in Denmark you can't really use it in politics because if you go and say God bless Denmark, nobody would really think about it. But it's a really big thing in America to say God bless America afterwards. And it's actually shown that Obama lost a lot of votes when last time because a lot of people actually thought, or 17% of the population thought he was a Muslim. That caused them to not vote for, vote for him actually. Mm -hmm. But he's still one though, so mm -hmm. that's something. Any questions? Yes? If uh, there was somebody in Denmark who was Muslim or perceived to be Muslim, what, was a, what would be the likelihood that they could get elected? That would be just as possible as if you were a Christian. It doesn't really do much. Well, maybe a, like between the elder people who have a matter and a bit maybe because we have some sort of a bit to racism in Denmark, but it's not as bad as it has been. I think the system allows for equal opportunity, but you have to have the people elect too. And of course, the Denmark is also influenced by what's happening in the Muslim world right now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, What is the leading religion in Denmark? It is Christianity. It is Christian? Yeah. Hmm? Protestantism. Protestantism? Yeah. Yeah. Lutheran. Lutheran. Yeah. Okay. okay, very good. Anything else? I think that church and state are separated in the US. Why, why are church and state separated as opposed to in Denmark? Why are church and state are not separated? I'm not sure. I'm is it because when they like the first settlers came here, that was because they wanted uh, uh, religion and politics in different mm -hmm. things? They don't want them to hang together. It's in the constitution, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> religious freedom. Yeah. yeah, religious freedom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, from like America, we talked about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, uh, if you saw on our, in our constitutions, uh, uh, the church was written in our constitution, mm -hmm. and in the American constitution, it said that church and state should be separated. Absolutely. So, uh, if you predicted that time, you would predict that Denmark would become very religious, and mm -hmm. that America uh, didn't. But because of that, it actually became uh, quite opposite, mm -hmm. or complete opposite. Mm -hmm. How do you compare American churches to Danish churches? We're talking about all the same. Mm -hmm. Which one are more fun to go to? Well, there's a much bigger business aspect to, to churches over here because you know there's free religion yeah. and the the church is not a state thing, so people have to you know draw people in, yeah. and that makes the churches much more bigger and the events is huge and they spend a lot more money 
on, on churches uh, over here compared to Denmark. As you said, there was like 0% attendance in, in Danish churches compared to 40% to weekly over here. Mm -hmm. Holy rollers, yeah. Have you ever been to a holy roller? Yeah. I think Tony wants to speak. Uh, to Tony? Now, some of you I know have been to church here. Uh, if you compare uh, the experience in the church with what we know a Danish Sunday church would be like, what what is the two difference? Is, 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 the, is, the, is the difference? I haven't been church here, but I know that in Denmark it's practically just a guy or a girl talking. Mm. So the priests are talking for way too long. And as far as I've heard, this should be more exciting to go mm. to church here. Mm. In Nikolai, uh, can probably go Oh yeah. Well, here we had <coughs> the Mormon church, though, so I'm not sure it's like that all around mm. in every church, but here it's the people in the church going up and talking, and it's different from week to week mm -hmm. how it's going to go. And afterwards, you also have classes where, where you learn about like God and all kind of things. Mm -hmm. so. Are women and men separated in the church? Some of the time, uh, mm -hmm. when, we, when you start out, it's like all together. And then you go out to classes where it's uh, separated by age. And then it's uh, by men and women. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, it's also men and women. Mm -hmm. Okay, More organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else had an experience? Anyone? Anyone? No? Okay. My name is Magnus and I want to talk about gender roles and statuses and the families in Denmark. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to talk about the status of men and women. Um, one third of the candidates were women in the parliament election in 2011. And of those, 39% were chosen. Uh, of the women were chosen. Um, there's 13.5% uh, 13 of the women got a higher education and only 12.9% of men got a higher education. That means the women got 0.6% uh, more higher education than men. Mm. Um, people aged from 30 to 49 that have children have a higher employment rate. Um, that is, of course, more than people without children. Um, when children are sick, women are more likely to be absent from their work than men are. Mm -hmm. Actually, we can see that um, women are double as likely than men to be absent from their work. Mm -hmm. and then I want to talk about the siblings in the family. Um, you can see that those, um, as from 2010 to 2014, there's less and less families from uh, siblings aged from 0 to 17. Mm -hmm. And of those, most of siblings, uh, people have one sibling, that means it's a family of four people. And second, most is people that have three children, so it's a family of four, five mm -hmm. people. And as it goes, it gets less and less siblings, so it's really reality that people got more than seven siblings. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about marriage. Um, Danes have uh, marriage in mind um, the most in Europe, according to some stati statistics. Um, but also the second most likely to get the worst. <laughs> mm. Yes. Um, of those, there are 37,210 marriage in 2002, so it's a little bit old statistic, but I couldn't find any newer. Mm. And of those, there's 15,000 that got the worst. So here you've got some numbers to look at. Mm. Um, from 1980 to 2002, 2.8 of 1,000 citizens got the worst to some more perspective thing. And here you've got a little graph of how it looks from 2005 to 2010. Mm. Um, then I want to talk a little bit about, about families, about when they have children and when they don't have children. I mean, single men usually don't have um, children. Mm. You can see without children there's a lot of people. And there's not that many men with children mm -hmm. that's not single. But with women, there's a lot more than men when they're, they're single. And with married couple, you can see there's also a lot of people that got children, but there's even more that don't have. Mm. Some married couples with the same gender, they most likely have 
uh, don't have uh, children, but some of them want for bonus. Some registered couples also have some, but most likely not. And cohabitant couples most likely have children that don't have. Mm. Wow. Um, yeah, many cohabit at uh, a uh, young age, but they have been married close to family and Kind members, kid members. Kin. Mm -hmm. In the late 1980s, homosexual register partnership, they allowed to from 1980s to late 1980s. Wow. Okay. And people, many people uh, marry because of their love. Mm -hmm. But it, it could also be because um, they gain some economic uh, equal. Uh, it could be as important as equal. Hmm. Not totally. And parents may want to give security to their children if they die or something, so their partner can help their children. And that's it. Any questions? You say that uh, if a child gets sick, it's most likely the mother that takes the day off. Yep. What is her job situation in case of a child's sick day? How we see paid for that? No, I'll take over on that. <laughs> Sorry. I can maybe mm -hmm. Well, the first uh, day of the kid's uh, sickness, uh, it's paid. But from yeah. there on, there's, uh, it's not paid anymore. Do you know how it is the holidays and taking off jobs? Mm -hmm. I don't know so much on that. They don't have kids. They don't have when kids. is when when is it normal to things to start having a family? Good question. About the mid twenties, I think. Oh, around right. thirty. We all age to having kids. Yeah. Thirty to eighty. We're getting older. Older, yeah. not younger. Yeah. Okay. And single parents is common. Yeah. More common. Yeah. More common. Yeah. Does it does it have the same connotation as in the U.S., where a single mom rarely has the husband in the picture, like amongst the black? Same. I think actually the government is changing the rules. Usually, it's because the government actually has favored the mother in. in mm -hmm. Consideration. Mm -hmm. They are trying to equal that out. With dads. Yes. Okay. All right. Very good. Good job. There you go. Yeah. I. My name is Oliver, and I have chosen about the Danish education system. Mm -hmm. How that works. Kind of compared to the American. Okay. Yeah. Here we got a chart over the Danish education system. Mm -hmm. When you're six years old, about six years old, you start off in. Basic school, which is like community school, mm -hmm. and there you have from zero to nine. You can then choose to go to the community school for the tenth year, which I chose to do. After that, you have like plenty different opportunity, like opportunities to go to, mm -hmm. and these are like targeted pathway in schools, which path the way you want to go forward with your next education. So if you want to be like a te technician guy or work with engineering, the, like the technical school would be better for you. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be a cashier or a businessman, maybe like the, the business school would be better for you. But it's all like general, so you get the normal, uh, like Danish, English, math, calculus, um, all that stuff mm -hmm. combined with it. After that, you go on to bachelor programs, a master program and PhDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, Education Denmark is free. Mm -hmm. And we get education support or money for going to school. Um, here you got a chart which is in Danish money compared mm -hmm. to your parents' income. Mm -hmm. So it's just a random list of money. So I get about $250 for going to school every month. Mm -hmm. And I know that some parents who like get divorced, they take it only from the one like parent 
which will then make them more money because the parent income isn't that large. Mm. Where if you have the parent have more kids, you get more money. Mm. And here is a chart of how well ranked the Danish education system are of the schools. And that's compared to test scores mm -hmm. and so on. We can see up on top all the Asian countries feasting. Mm. And down here we have Denmark and the United States. Any questions? Interesting. South Korea, huh? Okay. You get money out of the, the, the school system, but, but how is the school system financed? The school system? The school system. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's financed in taxing. So our parents pay taxes for us to go to school, mm -hmm. and that's how we go to school. And I'm pretty sure that the Danish community see like us going to school for free is an investment for them to make money in later years. Mm -hmm. And that's a big problem because many Danes take the free education in Denmark and grow yeah, smart. And after that, they move over here so they can make a lot of money from the low taxes. <laughs> and that's a big problem with school. Do you have a system of private schools as well, or are they all government run? Yeah, we have private schools, but I don't think they're that much used over there as here. Hmm. So the quality of education is at par, the yeah. same, private or? I'm not sure. Maybe it private is, schools. Maybe. Mainly it is. There hmm. is, of course, some uh, few private schools with elite students, but there are few. Okay. Mm -hmm. My cousin, he went to private school for 10 years. Uh -huh. Like for kindergarten to all the way to 10th grade. Mm -hmm. And that is like, they're like, still out. he said they're almost the same as community. Really? Yeah. Just, you get, I don't know, you get more. More what? Know, more, more, more in the like education and you get to which material you can learn. Mm -hmm. so things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Johan. We have three charts of that. Yeah, I'm only based on that one. Okay, what does it explain? Like a rank? Is that? Yeah, a rank. Just. It's rank is it uh, how smart the students is, or is it I, how I, good they are getting educated, or is it how good the students are? As I said earlier, it's based on tests. What's the best second and third one then? I don't know. The third year? Because yeah. minus for single one in the third one. <laughs> it would probably literacy or illiteracy rate because in Singapore illiteracy, no literacy is very low. Okay. So negative 33. Okay. Is just as a comment, uh -huh. I see that of all the non-Asian countries, Finland is the highest. Mm -hmm. And I think if you take a look at the United States, everybody here, at least in California, are looking at the Finnish model and saying, the Finns know what they're doing. They're doing it right. And we're trying to figure out how in a country of this size we can copy <coughs> what the Finnish are doing. And it's all about not standardized test scores, but mastery of the subject. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the thing is that plan is they actually put a lot of, uh, what do you call it, fate or belief behind the teacher's role. So they are expected again. A lot of, uh, at least in Denmark, the teacher's role has, has been degraded over time. Right? Mm. It has happened over here. So they're not as reflected anymore, and that, I think, goes through all of the system. It's hard to, if you don't have respect to, to keep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that that's, that's actually, actually the part of what the Finns have done. They have upgraded the so way of going from the, the, the local school. Now they have to have a university degree to, to <coughs> teach in even the smallest class. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Yeah. They might have special schools for, for teachers, actually, elementary school teachers. So yeah. you don't go to university, right. you become an elementary school teacher. If you want to teach high school level or higher, you have to go to university. It's a teaching school, yeah. Uh, so Michael and I, I'm asking this Michael, uh, we have about Danish ET. So first off, we, we read the te text we got from up here, and the text said some um, points about Denmark and how the ETIG is in Denmark. And uh, one of the things it said is privacy is a prime value in Danish ET. And in some ways that's um, true because we don't like, for example, sharing our feelings in public, for example. And it says in text that it's a sign of weakness, but I don't think that's, that's completely true. Hmm. But, yeah. <clears throat> well, um, the text said uh, also, uh, one is not supposed to invite on oneself into another person's house. This is somehow true, but another way it's not. Uh, if my best friend come home to me, I would not like him to knock on the door and stand outside and wait for me to come. Uh, I would actually hope he would just open the door and come in himself. Unless the door was locked, then I would of course have to because I'm not just giving him my key. Uh, so, on that point, it's not true. Uh, oh, well, where if a normal dame, uh, a salesman or someone you don't know that good yet, came to your house, um, or you're going home to your grandma's house, then you would of course knock on the door and wait for it to be opened for you because you're not just blasting into someone's home and just yelling hello and walking in in your muddy shoes and whatever. Hmm. So the text again says that Danes show few emotions public as I talked before, as the open expression of feeling is um, as considered a sign of weakness. And again, um, I would think that's true because like showing uh, feelings in, or emotions in public is, I don't know how to say it, but it's like, I would think it's not a sign of weakness or, yeah, it's just if you're emotional or something. Yeah. <coughs> then again, uh, Danes, of course, don't sit in the bus and cry over they lost their girlfriend or something. Um, we are too proud to do that. But when we come home to our friends or our parents or anything, we share it with them. Yeah. So in that way we show emotions, but not in public to every person we meet. Yeah, and again, that's in privacy and not in public. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless we are provoked, uh, we are not uh, going into arguments uh, as yeah, basic, but that's what the text said. Uh, actually, my experience is every Danes love to argue with uh, anyone about anything, uh, as we are arguing with this text <laughs> for an example, because we don't think it's true. Uh, Almost every Danes likes it, of course. There's the shy ones who is just sitting in the corner and never say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, so, there is examples of this too. So. Yeah, but sometimes, like, when you know you're not going to win an argument, like, some people just don't start it. So, yeah, that can vary as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't argue with a girl, for example. <laughs> so... Um, like this text basically says, like at dinner parties and conferences, there are no uh, formal introductions, leaving up to the uh, yourself to like in, um, interact with other people. And again, we disagree because that's why one of the reasons we come first at like dinner parties, so we don't have to walk around and like shake everybody's hands. You can just stand in one place, and then they have to shake your hand. <laughs> so, yeah. Good strategy. Well, our overall opinion about the text we were giving, which was like in five lines. sentences or uh, something, uh, is uh, we agree with some of it, but we disagree with almost everything because the, the text should be new, uh, was what we were told, but it seems like the text is written 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Very good. Uh, any questions?
this or how do these centers somehow constitute cultural stereotypes? Could, could you say that they, to a certain extent, are cultural stereotypes? Could you try to, to discuss that, please? Yeah. If they were any kind of cultural stereotypes, they would be... Uh, it would be an elder, elder than us, at least 30 maybe here, would remain from the city of Vega City. Uh, that would be the description of this text. Yeah, but that was more judgmental. I don't mean it in a negative way necessarily that it's called your stereotype. If you say all things are this, so could that somehow constitute a stereotype? That, for example, if I actually wear my shoes at my apartment. I, I wouldn't take off my shoes, for example. Hmm. So. Yeah, but most people in How many of you do? The rest of us. Let's just yeah. show of hands. Yeah. Him. <laughs> so yeah. Just yeah. All right, all Family things habit. like football, all yeah. things like. No. So you do think that this author tried to kind of overgeneralize yeah. all of the yeah. Danish people, right? Okay, good. Yeah. Any other? Yeah, well, that was pretty much the same. They said it was with the food. If mm -hmm. some, like a friend came by in the last second of my house, they would be able to eat with us. Just mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, making a stereotype at some point. Mm. Yeah. Okay.